welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Still, still I have no idea on this. However, all the while you still want to watch my videos, I will still make them. Right, doing two videos today, one on a, a foundation which um, clearly is, is uh, a tad too warm for my uh, um, <clears throat> cool neutral undertone skin, but let's gloss over that for a moment and concentrate on what is happening up here. Now, this is not a new palette by any means, but it is the first ever high-end palette that I bought for myself. And at the time, because I didn't have very much eyeshadow, um, I actually steamed through it. I hit pan on more than half of it. So I ended up having to go and buy a second one. So this is my second modern renaissance. Now normally I go straight for Buon Fresco and do lilacs and pinks. And, mm. But I went a little bit different today. As you can see. Not a pink, not a purple, not a red in sight. So, if you wanted to see exactly how I achieved this look, well, you're in exactly the right place. Here comes the tutorial. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Um, I'm doing a foundation review today, quite clearly. <laughs> not my colour. Right, I'm going to... Um, chuck a little bit of a concealer on. I'm going to go in with the Colourpop. It used to be Light Neutral 15, but that was their old um, numbering system. Not entirely sure what it is on the new one. So, chuck that on. And chuck a little bit of the uh, Fair 5, again this is the previous numbering system, just to add a little bit of um, brightness. Now as always I use a flat foundation brush just to put my concealer in with, I just find it spreads it out easier. You can use whatever you find easiest, you can use your sponge, you can use your fingers, you can use a different brush if you get on with a different brush. I know um, Taylor uses a, a rounder brush, doesn't she, like a stipple brush almost. But because I like to use my, con my um, concealer as my eye primer as well. Um, because I find, A, this, this holds my... my um, eyeshadow on fine all day when I set it with uh, translucent powder and also because where I've got such deep set eyes I've got quite a lot of veinage so if I don't if I'm not wearing makeup my eyes look like I've got brown eyeshadow on them anyway I've got like raccoon eyes um, that's why I've always got such deep such dark circles no matter how much sleep I actually manage to get and how much water I drink because it's actually where my eyes are so deep set that the veins show up through my skin. How's your day been? Is it good so far? I hope it is. The, um, the eyeshadow palette I'm going to be using today is not new by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's the second one that I've had because I actually hit pan on the first one but then that was when I had very few eyeshadow palettes um, where I have so many to choose from now I think the likelihood of me ever hitting pan on anything is um, yeah not very likely but the palette I'm going to be using today is Anastasia's Modern Renaissance or Renaissance or however you want to pronounce it I'm going to use my Coty Air Spun in Translucent Extra Coverage. Really love this powder. Yes, it's got a very strong scent to it, very sort of floral scent, 
Um, but then they've been putting that in for years. It's their traditional smell. And yes, you will probably will find out that my top and that will be covered in this because it does fly everywhere, even when I haven't got the fan on. But where I don't know whether it's because it's triple milled, but it just it sets my eyes, particularly my under eyes, so nicely. They stay much more moisturised during the day. So though I've got oily combo skin, my under eyes do go quite dry, and I think that's true of everybody. Um, and it, it also, it leaves your skin feeling so soft. I mean, like, ridiculously soft. So I'm just... I use a, a fluffy um, eyeshadow brush to set the concealer and my small lines down here and to get in around the base of the nose here because we all know these are the bits on me that split and cake quickest and as I said currently covered in coating. Right I'm now going to go in with a slanted kabuki now I like using a travel kabuki for this because you can push the collar up on the brush and tighten the density of the bristles because I use this to actually push the powder onto my nose to try and get that foundation to be as set as possible. And then any excess, I put the collar down so it's not so dense across my eyes. And just sweep it across my eyes. Yep, my top does look as if I've had a bottle of talcum powder thrown at me. Marvellous. It's going to be even worse when I'm finished with this. Yes, my Modern Renaissance was, I think, the first high-end palette I ever bought. Um, and I went through that very quickly. Uh, I hit pan on pretty much all of the purple and pink and red shades in there. Not so much the browns and oranges, I, I was definitely, you know, my, I think Born Fresco was the first one that I actually hit pan on because I was using that in every look as my crease shade, which if you've not seen um, modern Renaissance palette, where have you been? Um, but Warm Fresco is that one there, and you can see there's there's quite a dent in this one already. So, I'm just going to finish setting my face. Thankfully, I don't have to actually go anywhere today while I'm looking like an Oompa Loompa. This is the lightest shade in the foundation that I'm using. And other foundations from their range I've used without a problem. Um, but this one has got um, green pigments to fight redness, lilac pigments to fight dullness, and yellow pigments to fight dark circles. Um, and whilst it's doing a good job fighting my dark circles for me, uh, it's also making me look like an extra from The Simpsons at the moment. So, as I was saying, thankfully, I was going to do um, a couple more films today, apart from the foundation review and using my modern ring. But, given the state of my skin at right now, I don't think I'm going to bother. I think I might do it tomorrow when my foundation's actually the shade that matches me properly. Right, um, I'm not going to go in with a bronzer today, I'm going to go in with a contour, which uh, I'm using the Makeup Obsession Contour Powder C102 Light, and yes, I managed to ding it with my nail, don't ask. And I'm using, this is a Real Techniques Multitask Brush, it's um, loosely packed, 
there's a lot of them but it's, it's not densely packed and it's actually an oval shape rather than being round so I just find it works better for getting in under your cheekbone there and I'm just going to contour where I normally bronze which to be honest is where you should normally contour so I'm actually contouring properly today I don't normally contour because I've got quite high cheekbones anyway um, you can see I've got you know, a fair old shadow there to start off with so normally I just bronze the areas so that I've got a bit of colour in my face but colour in my face is not an issue today <laughs> oh my husband's going to laugh when he comes in actually he's probably going to say to me are you feeling alright? Oh, looking slightly jaundiced at the moment And then I'm going to go in with my So Eco tapered blending brush. And I think I'm going to go into this Wet n Wild that I got from Amazon. And it's shade Pearlescent Pink. And it's not really a pink, it's more of a, an apricot to me, but it's a really beautiful colour. And it's got just a tiniest bit of, of um, mica in it. Doesn't really notice until you get outside and the sunlight hits it and one it's not sunny today and two I'm not going out with my skin looking like this colour but it's just it's a really pretty shade and it does actually last all day as well um, which is good because a lot of blushes on me do end up fading by the end of the day Let's zoom you in a wee bit. Oh, a little bit too far. There we go. Um, just a clean spoolie. Let me pick them up for peanuts in packs of 50, which is what I do. Because if I want, um, you know, if I'm using a Jeffree Star liquid lipstick as liner and lashes, I just dip one of these into the uh, into the liquid lipstick, which is great. So. If there's a lipstick that doesn't quite suit me, or goes a bit patchy, or makes my lip, uh, my teeth look too yellow, I just use it as a liner instead. Right, I'm going to use um, L'Oreal Brow Artist Expert um, in shade Cool Brunette. This has got a spoolie at one end. And at the other end, it's the same sort of shape as the Goof Proof Brow Pencil because I've been liking that sample that I had from Benefit. So I'm just going to start off running it along the bottom of my brow to decide where I want my brow to be. And then just gently fill in and darken the brow down a bit. I'll do a little bit of wafty bit at the front here. And then just brush through with the spoolie. So I could have just used this spoolie, couldn't I? I'm just so used to using my ordinary spoolie because I don't normally have the essence pencils that I've got. I've got like a a rubbery brush thing on the end rather than a, a spoolie because those pencils are actually pomade pencils whereas this is a true this is a true pencil rather than a, a creamy pomade pencil it's just it, it's ever so slightly darker than um, the brown that I use in my essence brow pencil some days I just want a slightly darker brow so I mean I've used this twice now and just to show you you do actually get a fair amount of um, of pencil in there so put that back down and I shall set it with a little bit of uh, essence brow gel you can use any clear mascara for this 
Um, you can use hairspray on a spoolie, which I have done many times when I've run out. Um, you don't have to use the expensive stuff, like the, the you know the ready set brow one of those that I had. I mean, don't get me wrong, that was fantastic, but the prices weren't. Right, time to stick some colour on these eyes, I think. I have got my colour switch for changing colours on the brush. Um, as I said, I normally go straight for Buon Fresco, and that has actually got a fair dip in it now. So I think I might actually go into the browns for once because I've, I've done quite a few purple looks just recently because every time I get a new palette if it's got a purple in it or a blue I tend to use it because those are the most difficult colours to create uh, oh, hang on, that was the door, hold on wrong house right, I'm going to go into warm taupe with a fluffy blending brush I'm just going to sweep that through my crease. And then pick up a wee bit more, tap off, and just twirl it in one direction, and then lift it up a bit and twirl it back the other way. And then lift it up a bit and twirl it back again. And once I've got it up as high as I want it, I then just do a little sort of windscreen wipers, little mini windscreen wipers in sections, just to make sure that it's all blended and there's no there's no chunky bits or bumpy bits or bits where my skin's folded over on my eyelid and left a gap. I normally take it to about four or five mils below the lowest part of my brow or about the width of a brush handle you can take yours up as high as you feel comfortable I like to leave a gap so that I can um, put highlight under the brow just because it helps to lift the brow and give a more youthful appearance I'm going to see you in a wee bit more because where it keeps seeing the brush moving, I think that's why it keeps losing focus all the time. So I'm just repeating the same thing on this eye. Just twirling backwards and forwards with that uh, warm taupe. Now this is the eye that I'm blind in and it got pulled about an awful lot when I was a kid. Um, and as such the skin on this eye does actually move a lot and crease a lot more. You can see that there it creases and it actually stays in a crease. Um, so this is normally the eye that I have problems with. If I'm going to have a problem getting eyeshadow to go on, it'll be this eye that does it. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yep, I quite like that. Uh, I'm going to go into, I think, Antique bronze next on the same brush. I'm gonna deepen this up a little bit, add a little bit of warmth. I'm not gonna take it as high this time because I want to leave some of the taupe still showing. So I'm literally just keeping it by the crease there just to add a wee bit of warmth and start to build the colour up. Now when you're blending, hold the brush right at the end and then you put as little pressure as possible on your eyes. Um, and the trick with blending is you blend and you blend and you blend. And then you blend a bit more, and then you blend a bit more. And when you feel like your hand's going to fall off the end of your arm, you just blend a little bit more and then you're about done. No, seriously though, you know, there are some shadows which go muddy if you blend them too much. Um, but to me that's just a sign of a inferior shadow, to be quite honest. Um, the majority of the 
Well, all of the, the palettes that I've actually kept, because if I had any that went muddy, I've, I've basically, you know, decluttered them. Took any, took any pans out that did work and were okay, and put them into a magnetic palette, and then just decluttered it if it was no good. Um, Because there's no sense donating it because unfortunately in the UK they, the women's shelters and stuff don't take even partly touched makeup unfortunately. Otherwise I would have done that. So there we go, that's building the warmth up on that. Right, to clean that brush off and now I'm going to pick up slightly more tapered brush and I'm going to go into cypress umber that beautiful sort of mahogany brown I'm just going to stamp that on the outside corner just to lay the pigment down initially Sorry if my white balance keeps going up and down. I've, I've got my um, LED lights on here, but um, I've also got daylight coming in. And uh, at the moment, it's it's overcast. So one minute I've got beautiful light, and the next minute I haven't. I think actually I'm going to get a pencil brush just to get a little bit closer to my lashes there my lashes do tend to curl up quite a bit here and I struggle sometimes with actually getting pigment close enough to the lashes using a you know a tapered brush um, without actually poking myself in the eye with the, the bristles which yeah I've done that a few times I tell you I'm just gonna run that literally just through the there goes my white balance again literally just through the crease and I'm gonna blend it on the crease so the first colour we blended right the way up, the second one we blended to just above the crease. This one I'm tilting my head back and I'm literally blending on the crease because I don't want to take this too far up the eye at all. And then just gently buffing that outside edge there. And you can see that does just, just gives you a nice depth of colour. So I'm going to repeat on the other eye. I'm going to go straight in with the pencil brush this time to save fannying around. A little bit of fallout there, but we can soon deal with that. Always keep a fluffy brush to hand so you can sweep any fallout away um, unless you've baked obviously in which case just wait until you're done and then just sweep it all away with the bake so run that through the crease tilt my head back trying to stay in frame forward a bit I might be able to stay in frame with my head, head tilted back and just blend that on the actual crease itself you can see that I really struggle with See the stripes there, look? That's the trouble that I have with this particular eyelid. Um, because it got pulled around so much when I was a kid. So do not tug on your eye eyelids. Uh, unless you want to end up with uh, the tiger stripe effect like I keep getting. And the annoying thing is I now can't use liquid liner too close because it actually runs up those creases and bleeds right up my eye, which is um, bleeding annoying. Sorry, I, I appear to be picking up my husband's love of bad puns. I swear he's got a second job writing Christmas cracker jokes out of him. He makes me laugh though. Right. Okay. I'm going to go in with this 
flat brush and I'm going to pick up burnt orange and just run that right up underneath the bottom lash line. It's not a rabid cat, it's an alarm on my phone. So let's just run this along just under the bottom lash line there. I struggle with keeping um, liner in my waterline. I mean, I struggle all year, but at the moment with my hay fever being like it is, and having poked myself in this eye earlier, I don't really want to put anything on my water line. But you can still get a nice effect by underlining the lashes. Right, I'm going to go in with this sort of shaped packer brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of real gar, which is that gorgeous orange. And just gently smudge that along that bottom lash line there. Just to soften the burnt orange that we put down. And I'm literally just putting it on the tip of the bristles there. Look at that beautiful pigment. And then just gently, very, very gently, buff that as well to match. And then I'm going to go into Golden Ochre, which is a really lovely sort of, it's kind of a mustardy colour really. I'm just going to lay that using a dry brush onto the two thirds of the lid that we haven't put any colour into yet. Sure. What's your favourite palette? Have you got this one? Do you like this one? A little bit of fall out there. I think that was more operator error than um, I don't think I tapped off enough. It just gives a really nice. It's not very often you'll see me do a very very warm look like this. I tend to go more for the cooler shadows. But I like that. Right, I am going to go off screen and do some liner and put some mascara on, and I will be straight back. Hey, I'm back. Um, for liner today, I've actually used one of these new NYX holographic halo. The box is holographic, <laughs> the liner isn't. Um, it's a cream eyeliner. This one is in shade Crystal Vault. Let me just zoom in so you can have a quick look at it. Okay. Um, and apparently these can actually be spread out over the eye and used as a cream eyeshadow as well. So. I might give that a go. I've got it in three colours. I've got this one. I've also got um, this purple one called Cotton Candy or Lilac and this green one called Killing It which I had that on the other day in my Hell Yeah Why No episode 7 I believe. So this is the second one that I've used, the silver one. I like it very much tip for you, see the shape of it, 
so it's got this ridge around here yeah you actually have to take it out the bottom of the box otherwise this piece of card here stops it from coming out I won't tell you how long it took me to work that out the other day let's, let's not have that discussion huh <laughs> Uh, mascara wise I used the Avon colour trend that I got in my second Avon mystery box um, highlight today is the first Manny Jeffrey collab um, Eclipse which is the uh, like a pale peach um, yes mine has gone to hard pan because I made the mistake of using it with a fan brush at first and it needs a firmer brush but as you can see I can still get colour off of it beautifully and it still blinds and I just use um, a brush like this uh, if you find that you've got eye, um, highlighters that are going to hard pan if you use a more densely packed brush like that not only will it stop the hard pan getting worse but you can still pick colour up without being there for four hours uh, the lipstick is another one of these little mini bite lipsticks that I managed to pick up. This is in shade Honeycomb. And the setting spray that I used today. Remember me saying about how 2018 is the year of the, the body goop glitter type stuff. Um, and the illuminated setting spray. I got myself an illuminated setting spray. <laughs> This is the Barry M1 uh, makeup setting spray and body fix, and it's basically got ro rose gold mica in it. Um, so, as I'd gone for quite a, a warm toned look today, I thought that would be appropriate. So, there we go. That is my, for once, not the purpley pinks look from the Modern Renaissance palette. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, perhaps you could hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe. If you have subscribed, click the bell. If you've clicked the bell, double check it. Because now apparently when you click the bell, a box comes up and you have to say how many notifications you want. So if you want to always be told when I have a video coming up, you have to tell them you want to always be told. The fact that I've subscribed to a channel and I've turned the notifications on shows you that I'm very interested in that channel. But now I have to do the third step as to say, yes, I want all of the notifications, not just one every now and again when you feel like sending me one. YouTube are not being very helpful to creators at the moment. So do please check that if you're not getting notified that I've put new videos up. That could be why. So all that's left for me to say is stay fabulous and I'll see you again soon bye for now mm -hmm.